Welcome to the Brickworks podcast, an extension of the studio based here in Burnham on Sea. Our aim for this podcast is to have a completely open forum for conversation. This could be about art, life, mental health, or even how the world is burning down around us right now. Whether you're listening to this whilst on a run or relaxing at home, we hope you enjoy our mild mannered rambles. Thank you. First time doing it, you know. I like the, there's a bit in um, the Will Ferrell um, film, I think it's Talladega Nights, where he's being interviewed and he doesn't know <laughs> what to do with his hands. Yeah. And he just like drift out, doesn't he? Yeah. He's like, I love that. I'm like, that's cool. It's weird, isn't it? Because I think like we live in such like a digital age. Like we're always FaceTime, well, especially now, we're mm. always like FaceTiming or like picture texting or whatever it is. So we're always on camera, but we're like normally controlling the camera. It's really interesting, mm. I found. Like, because you sometimes you put on like a bit of a like your hands might do this or yeah. you put on a bit of a persona it's, it's quite strange isn't it yeah well I think as well there's that subconscious as well where you're always kind of like talking about affirmation and things like that where you're mm. kind of like worried how you're going to come off and like oh no what if someone thinks this about me or what if like you know th- this doesn't go down well or like you know like saying as well about like um, social media and like self image and stuff I think mm-hmm. like there's a real big danger that we self police ourselves like that isn't it like mm. thinking about you know how we come off and stuff yeah I think there's almost like the challenge is not to overthink it now it's really mm. strange because I don't know I don't know about yourself but like sometimes I'll, I'll be putting a picture on like Instagram or something I try my hardest not to do this anymore but I'll be putting like a picture on Instagram and I overthink the shit out of it like the caption or something Mm. I'm like wait is this doing the right am I telling the right thing like is this correct like almost like yeah policing myself in in a way of like the way I'm showing myself it's like Mm. in reality it should just be like put it out there let it be you know yeah I think it comes down as well with like your agenda as well like what do you want to get out of that platform as well isn't it like Mm. I think if you're looking to sell something then image and everything is super important but um if you were like you know a casual artist or a hobbyist if you want then really you're just looking to just share your stuff but mm-hmm. then again that comes with like a problem as well because like are you going to be phased by like comments and stuff yeah good, good and bad like i mean what's a like with like yeah but at the same time like if you're honest you like check your phone to see how many likes something's <laughs> got but at the same time like in your truest essence you're like a like doesn't really mean anything but no then again you get a like or you get a like by someone you respect or whatever in your mm. field for example mm-hmm. and you're like oh and you can't wait to like tell like someone else in your field like guess what such yeah. and such likes my stuff and then all of a sudden that oh well, it's just a like all of a sudden has like body all of a sudden you're yeah like, mm. it almost has context to mm. it rather mm. than just sort of just being another digital pixel or such yeah yeah really interesting because i think like i don't know if you've ever found it where it's interesting how you say like somebody that you you know inspired by or something like liking a picture uh i've had that before where like an uh, an artist that's inspired me as a photographer has liked one of my pictures Mm. and it's like this elacious moment it's like we were talking before we started this podcast about like making it as an Mm. artist you know and it was it it's like one of those feelings of like oh fuck i've made it Mm. it's like actually no it's just just like it's a little love heart yeah like it's a it's a weird contradiction but are you like yeah just add like like it has like more value because it's someone in your field or even if it's not someone in your field like mm. just like even more so like just really obscure someone or even someone from across like the other side of the world and you're like wow like for a long time like all I would get would be Russian people like in my <laughs> stuff. I was like, how would like, you know, like how is the like algorithm and everything? How <laughs> yeah. does that work out? That like, it's a lot of Russian people that's digging my stuff. Yeah. Weird. And then you think, and then that gets you thinking as well, because then you think, oh, well, if there's an algorithm, then like, it's not really, I mean, we were talking earlier off camera about like, um, like belonging to tribes and stuff and mm. appealing to like certain, like, certain types of people if you're looking at your marketplace if you like if yeah of course and um yeah it's weird like because if it's an algorithm then you're not really so you know when people boost their posts and everything i never understand that because like yeah you're like not really reaching your target audience whatever that may be you know yeah yeah yeah. like 
<laughs> whoever that is. But yeah, like when you boost stuff, it's just a random. Yeah, you're sort of just yeah. putting it. You're sort of almost just putting it out into the world and hoping mm. somebody catches it. Mm. It's almost like uh, throwing a fishing line out into the ocean. It's like yeah. you're hoping something catches it. In For a way. sure, but as well, like you're just gonna like generate a lot of likes. But going back to what we were saying, it's just empty likes mm. you know, where it's mm. not someone in your field or it's not your target audience and stuff. Yeah, I think it's you know I, I have this conversation. I think it's weird because being an artist has almost become being like a social media expert at the same time i was mm -hmm. thinking about this it's like you kind of have to know what you're doing with like instagram or facebook especially if you're trying to make it like full time make yeah, it, make it yeah. <laughs> as an artist <laughs> you kind of have to know how to you know attract certain audiences etc mm. it's like it's become such a a key component of actually being a creative now mm. and it's really interesting to hear like different people's perspectives especially when they're in different stages of their career you know like i know yourself has sort of come out of uni you're doing tattooing full time now yeah. um so you're you're sort of at that sort of intermediate gray area as an artist where it's like you're working as an artist obviously doing something you mm. love um but then also you do these other things that you love so it's, uh, i'm guessing it's a case of figuring out how to combine them or like make them work separately or yeah yeah kind of like work yeah kind of i mean obviously if you're like working like a nine to five should we say as a like professional tower artist and then you've got your other side as well it kind of has to like almost like um like navigate around that really because obviously your nine to five is your bread and butter i think that's the way mm. i would sort of describe mm. it really like because obviously you can't just like abandon your clients on a whim <laughs> to go off and paint a wall somewhere mm. although like it, in like in that that's another thing like are you being true to yourself in that regard because like mm. obviously as an artist if the whim takes you that's when you should be at the height of your creativity and if yeah. you're like saying oh no i gotta make my nine to five totally totally you know what totally, I mean? and yeah. then that arms your creativity like that but. yeah it's almost like you're stifling your own growth in a way mm. like uh, yeah well, but then you're selling out because then you have to like put like bread on the table and stuff. totally it's it's such a fucking finite mm. balance i found like uh, and <laughs> i'm gonna be honest i haven't found anyone that isn't in their 40s or 50s as an artist who's actually figured out that balance correctly yeah. yet because i think it's like it's hard it's mm. so hard especially now you know with how the world is literally on fire in some places yeah. being being just trying to be an artist or at least trying to sell your artwork has become like it's become like this fucking full-time job well it is a full-time job anyways but like more than full-time if that makes mm. sense like you're sort of having to dedicate all of your being to try and make make it as an artist yeah. now and well you've got a funny dichotomy when you're an artist in like times like these because these times aren't that unusual like no. every like generation of artists has had them in some mm. way shape or form mm. and i say it's a double-edged sword because like when you have hard times like you have like a myriad of like things to be inspired by like yeah. i mean look at trump on his own <laughs> like you know you could make your life's work just about trump and the things totally. he comes out with and all the rest of it and his views and everything totally. but then like on the other side of it double-edged sword yeah. the negatives is when things are bad and there's a recession and no one's got any money and no mm. one's buying pretty pictures when you know if you've <laughs> yeah. got the choice between like mm, yeah. bread and milk on the or, table or, <laughs> or a lovely art yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, you know totally. so and that's been the case throughout history as you know like you're always gonna have that where like you've got like an abundance of yeah like i said abundance of mm. subject matter and mm. things to be inspired by or can feed yeah. into your art but yeah there is a lot actually thinking about it right now there is a lot to make art about mm. like whatever the art form I yeah suppose. and it doesn't just have to be political does it no, like, you know no, you've really no. got to look at like the money aspect of things and there's so much like you could just like <laughs> honestly go nuts with it totally man totally. oh going back to as well like the social media thing another thing that's interesting with that is like i like in not just the likes likes the side like the comments and everything and not just that like dming people as well like mm. you've got to open like letterbox to like anyone like whether it's like yeah. high-end artists or like just someone like you just like dig their stuff or whatever like an mm. instant like 
message like service mm. whereas before like way back when like you wouldn't like it would have been in a letter and it probably yeah. wouldn't have got read but now you know you'd have to find like the address and all of those yeah, things yeah, exactly. totally and totally you just got like so there's like some things that make and as well not only that like you've got a file of facts of a who's who like you can just mm. find anyone and then then usually like they follow someone else and then that puts you on someone else and then before you know it like you can like it really opens up like people that you wouldn't normally see if mm. you want to if you're open to look for people artists yeah it does it does really create like an open forum mm. in a way doesn't it actually um it's interesting because the amount of conversations going back to what i was saying i have about social media with artists it's really interesting because when you speak to uh, you know an individual who's not an artist or has no artistic intent as such they don't really talk about social media that much like for example i've got friends that you know work in steel industry all of these things mm. we don't talk about instagram we don't talk about facebook it's really interesting mm. how it's so important in uh, to to art at the moment where well, it has been for the last what decade yeah 100% i think it's like of all of the platforms is the most like not only accessible but like beneficial to artists i just think mm. it's like it's it's in our it like just plays to our strengths right like totally. it's pictorial <laughs> yeah yeah it's visual like do you know what i mean it's yeah, like yeah. it's pretty instant as well mm. Mm. and even like with the like i mean like i say like um social media i really only use instagram really i mean i i, I do have a facebook account but it's just really for work if i didn't get it for that i wouldn't use it, use it at all I mean? yeah totally totally but that's not to be said that other people don't use it to their benefits it's just i'm not mm. like sav like like savvy to get the best out of it i don't mm. think do you think that's because being from a visual art sort of background you're more interested in like something more visual like instagram being it's this six by six square rather than these long you know statuses yeah. i on think cause it's e i think it's because it's easier to navigate for me really mm. and like and not only that like not only, by it being easier it like it's more like useful to me like because it's user friendly it's more accessible and that makes it more attractive for me to use because i can use it for whatever mm. purpose i need it for mm. whereas like with like like you know like twitter when that comes, <laughs> i never really got twitter like you no. know if we say that instagram's good for visual artists yeah then twitter is definitely made for like celebrities and journalists or, yeah, primarily if you yeah, wanna, yeah like yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, because like, when you really look, yeah, if you look at like the nuts and bolts of like what it is, like yeah. it kind of definitely does like belong to that, like yeah, no, that's really interesting. So I was just thinking then it was like Instagram really is for artists made, when you think yeah. about it because it's all about the picture, mm -hmm. like the visual, the caption. Okay, it's more important now with Instagram's like update with our algorithm or whatever, um, which we won't go into because that mm -hmm. is boring. boring. <laughs> <laughs> but um, then you compare that to Twitter, which is, you know, the, the people that utilize Twitter the most are journalists or PR agents mm. for celebrities. Mm. So yeah, no, it is very much catered. It's, it's really interesting because like, this conversation is now like, you know, we're speaking about the, the hamster wheel in the yeah, mind yeah, as an yeah. artist. I'm now thinking like, oh fuck, maybe there's yeah. something to do about social media, like all of these, that sort of stuff. Yeah. It like opens up all these different doors. Like and it's I really think, interesting. Sorry to enjoy it. And the other thing I think with Twitter as well, it like, and like I'm not particularly a fan of it, but it seems very one way as well. I know mm. you can comment and stuff, but if you don't want to read them comments, like then you don't have to. Whereas with Instagram, yeah. But yeah i know you could block people i get it. like and then there's that like more nefarious side of it yeah but yeah generally most people aren't really abusing like mm. what it's there for and so it is you know you are it's more like you can go back and forth do you know what i mean whereas yeah. with twitter is very much I found like this is my thought on the moment and yeah. that's it <laughs> or i'm holding this event come yeah then, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah so and then like it's kind of finished then isn't mm. it until the next tweet it's, it's very fast sort of media whereas mm. i suppose instagram out of all of the social medias in some ways is actually a little bit more thought provoking like you can go and look at somebody's profile and their pictures are you know fairly well organized or whatever mm. it might be um compare that to like you know facebook less you know facebook is very much 
I don't know if you would agree, <laughs> but I feel like Facebook is controlled by like 40 year old women now and 50, like mums, okay, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. you go on Facebook and it's all people sort of selling baby grows on mm. Facebook marketplace or like talking about anti-vaxxing and like yeah, yeah, QAnon yeah. and all this other stuff. And I'm like, I'm looking at this show and I'm thinking, what am I doing yeah. with this? Or like, around with their neighbours, like yeah. more and more, like people like just want to kill their neighbours, <laughs> <laughs> or think, like they want to find out where their green recycling bin's gone. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, no, it's it's weird. I suppose though, in a way, that is kind of what Facebook is for. It maybe not the green recycling bins, but yeah. like the, the the you know the idea of face to face or whatever. Um, no, that's that's cool, man. Because like I, I had a look at your sort of social media stuff because I know you're part of the collective as well, the Brickworks Collective, mm-hmm. which is where, where I sort of picked up on your work a lot more. But as I was saying earlier, I always, I'm more than ninety percent sure we have talked at one point before. Yeah, this. yeah, I think like yeah, spray jam, uh, but yeah, 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 yeah. Bozfest. I think I don't know if you find those sort of jams. They're really strange in the. They're not a competition, of course, mm. but you're almost like you see somebody else making a really cool piece. So you're like, fuck, I, I want to do like, I need to add to this or maybe change this. Or like, I've always found it interesting in that context, not competitive mm. by any means, but almost inspiring seeing other artists do like really intricate pieces or whatever. So, uh, cause I know as, as, as you said, you did Bozfest. Have you done like other, cause there's so many spray jams and all of those things around the country now. Yeah. Is it something that obviously not this year necessarily, <laughs> but is it something that you do quite often? Yeah. Well, no, like not really like, cause like with graffiti, like it's always been an interest, but like, I'm not, I only want to do legal wars. So mm. like, yeah, like spray jams and everything primarily are like, my main outlet other than doing stuff for myself or, or yeah. murals. Yeah. So not really, I mean, I've applied a couple of years for Upfest, but mm. um, never really got anywhere with it. And mm. so, yeah. Mm. And then did like, I did like a spray jam in, in Western where I met like some cool peeps. Yeah, that's, I, I think that one happened only a few months ago, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's I think still out there now. It's rain, it's on some hoarding around the corner from the, the courthouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. the road from like the, the yeah, some um, cool pieces. Council. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's some cool. It's really cool to see like the street art scene develop in mm. the Southwest. Like, I know Bristol's obviously yeah, yeah, been massive, the hub yeah, for it yeah, yeah, for yeah. however many years now um, in some ways. But you can see it starting to trickle out into like smaller places like, you know, Burnham, for example, mm. Western. It's really cool to see that. Yeah, I think it does put shine on like more local at, like artists, if you know mm, what I mean. Mm. And not only that, like it's good to like network as well and meet people through it. Like, yeah, definitely. hundred percent. Like, totally. Please. And not just for like artists to network, but also like, you know, future collectors or people that are just digging your art. Like it's yeah. a good thing to like put the face to like someone's piece if you know what I mean like <laughs> how many times if like you walk past like something and excuse me it's been like you know this faceless like artist and then yeah. all of a sudden you're like oh okay you did like yeah. I didn't even realize oh okay that's cool and then yeah. like it can open a dialogue or, or whatever mm. or even yeah or even not then that's cool as well like. yeah definitely I think like yeah like the the networking part of it is such a big part of these sort of jams I've found like Mm. you know or you know collective exhibitions or you know obviously it's interesting because I have such a strong interest in like the street art world uh, graffiti however one Mm. wants to talk about it but also I have like my other hand in the very you know elitist Mm. (laughs) photography sort of side of things in some ways like Tate Mod not Tate Modern but The Cube and all of those places like high end galleries so it's really interesting for myself personally, seeing the correlation between, you know, sh- like put it on the street, which I'm a big fan of, mm. but then also this idea of like, you're almost elevating the work. Like we were saying earlier, you're, you're taking the work, whatever it is, and putting it on this white wall, you're changing it. It's like, yeah. it's meaning in some ways. Yeah, well, you're kind of taking out of context as well, isn't mm. it? Like, you know, mm. it's not, yeah, it's a funny thing. Like it's, well, and it's, very similar in a way of like seeing a lion in the wild and then <laughs> seeing a lion in the zoo mm, in mm. The, like and it, it, even though you could say like in this pen it's got like 
the background is like as close as you can get to like it being in the like the world is it's not that so it's no. it's not authentic straight away from Definitely. that is it so that's probably yeah, an interesting way of looking yeah at it. i think that's the thing is like it's it's interesting because for for myself finding that balance is hard like because part of me wants to put all of my work out on the on the street or make it really easily accessible, mm. not on white walls as such. But then the other half of me is almost sort of trained to think that is the correct way to show work in a way. Like, mm. you know, I, I would love to go down the curator route as, a, you know, later on in my career or whatever. So that naturally pushes you more towards like the traditional gallery uh, you know aesthetic you know even the brickworks although we're a visual arts studio when we do exhibitions they're going to be somewhat traditional in some context you know mm. they're white walls with pictures hanging yeah. on them so it makes it a really interesting conversation to have actually i think yeah it's a funny thing when you think about like um a gallery space in particular unless you're doing a show for a show's sake as in like you're trying to like um uh promote like the artist's voice if you're not doing that then you're looking to sell right yeah and when you're selling and you got them on the white walls is so mm. someone comes in and thinks generally like this is a horrible way of looking at it but they're thinking hmm I need something for my lounge and my <laughs> color scheme is mustard and gray yeah hmm that's a nice picture that's yeah. got mustard and gray in it I'd yeah. like that picture and then they made a sell like it's like a, a like an odd thing to say but that's generally how we go into galleries to buy mm, things like, mm. unless you're going to a gallery and like you know it's shock art or it's political art and then it's not art necessarily to buy mm. because it don't go with your drapes <laughs> <laughs> that's such a true <laughs> which is my problem that. because like my like art aside from like towering and graffiti is more like contemporary and like really quite um uh like symbolic stuff i like um making things with symbols in them and it's not always obvious what they are and mm. i mean we were talking off air earlier and um about like how you feel if you make something symbolic and then you hear yeah. that someone else doesn't read it that way and they've got a completely different take on it mm. like, i was curious with you like to think like <laughs> how do you feel about that are you like frustrated that, like your message hasn't been like received or are you just like yeah. okay that's cool they got that or like are you kind of like how did you even get that <laughs> <laughs> i think it's definitely the latter part yeah. part of it yeah no I, it's interesting it's an interesting question to ask because yeah as an artist you you naturally so for you know for myself being a documentary photographer naturally there's a story that i have in mind that i want to tell mm -hmm. and i want i would like the audience to read it as that story so there is almost this um i don't know there's almost this preparation of one like preparing the audience to read that or read mm -hmm. it in that context but as we were saying a little bit earlier like I'm not a fan of bios. I don't like these big descriptive bios yeah. as a as a as a viewer. Like, so it makes this really interesting question of how do I feel about somebody not necessarily misreading the art, but misreading the project. I think it's a painful experience in some ways, especially if you've done a lot to make a project tell a story, or mm. or at least want to like pull the audience in that that direction and sort of speaking from experience you know i've had shows in a couple of different gallery spaces whether they're collective shows or solo shows and i've i found that the the show that was best received and best understood was a show i did in port talbot for treasure island which was the project i, I showed yourself mm -hmm. before this but for people listening or watching, the project was about um, the steel, um, the steelworks in Port Talbot in South Wales. And the whole project sort of built around this idea of uh, my relationship with steel through my father. And it's like this anthropology thing, uh, emiketic and rambling. But when I came to exhibit the work, I was offered a space in a gallery on Brick Lane in London, mm -hmm. completely randomly, got an email one day hi, Mr. Deer, we've seen your project, da, da 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 would you be interested in da 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 And I looked at that email and I, 
at the time I had made the book or was making the book and wasn't actually going to make an exhibition necessarily of the project. Um, and then the idea of doing a show in Port Talbot was sort of thrown at me from uh, an artist, well, a group of artists I met in the town and a guy called Alid Williams, who is like a collector, curator. And I had to make a decision between where do I like show the work first? Because this is a project that I've put a lot of time and energy in, you know, build up somewhat of an audience that's interested in looking at this work through social media. Mm. Um, and I decided to go down the route of doing it in Port Talbot. So Port Talbot's this tiny little, you know, I say tiny, this small, you know, town in South Wales that apart from the Banksy that's there, isn't really necessarily known for its art scene. It's, mm -hmm. you know, very affluent. It's street art scene's affluent as well now, but poetry, etc. But in reality, if you are, ask that question to another artist, they may go the other way and do the show in Brick Lane mm. because you're going to get footfall. It's a huge, you know, it's, yeah, it's, a, know. it's, a, it's a fantastic yeah. space to show. <clears throat> but I decided to do it in Port Talbot, not because it was this idea of, um, you know, being different and fighting the the, the, the norm. Mm -hmm. It was because I felt that the, the community of Port Talbot had been so open with me. I wanted them to see the work first. I wanted yeah. them to have their stories that they had told me sort of, you know, put back into the place that they were shot. And with that, I wanted to hear what they had to say, what they saw through the work, how they reflected on the images I made. And the idea of had I achieved my goal of going from an outsider to being an insider in this project, which is the goal for a lot of documentary mm. photographers in some ways. And so to come full circle to your question, in that, in that environment where it's the, you know, the people that I had become friends with and you know looking at the work and then giving you know their stories back to me that was like quite poetic for me as an artist having that moment and feeling a, as a part of the community that I had so graciously be allowed to photograph but then on the flip side when I've done shows in uh, you know other countries or in more traditional galleries um so the show in Port Talbot was actually in a disused church that mm -hmm. might help a little bit as okay. well. Um, but when I've done shows in like a white wall gallery, yeah, it is a bit frustrating when I have a story that I, I, I'm trying to tell and it gets misread, but there's more stories that come from that. There's more um, interest I find in when people miss, not misread, but maybe go off a rabbit hole in a picture. Mm. Oh, that reminds me of such and such. And it tells me this. I find that interesting because A, it gives me feedback as an artist to think, okay, so this individual obviously sees it as this way. So why is that? Mm. Like, is it, is it because the image is reading that or am I trying to force this on the, on the viewer? So yeah, it's an interesting question to ask. And I think to answer your question, it's different depending on the different environment I found and who you're showing to, especially. So mm. I think, for example, yourself, I suppose, like doing stuff on the street in like a jam, you know, or even even your tattoos thinking about it, you know, there's there's a level of like story that you're telling in that, but it's naturally gonna be taken in different contexts, I think. Um, especially on the street because you don't know who the hell's walking yeah, past exactly, it in a way yeah. i think with um like my <clears throat> more so in my street art is less symbolic is more like mm. more expression like you know like if it depends like if it, it like for example if it's a, if it's a spray jam like i'm usually more often than not predetermined what i'm gonna do because mm. you need to like buy your like colors and all the rest of it yeah of course but, like if it's something that you like you know you're doing like just off the cuff and everything then obviously like it's more like an image that's kind of within you that you need to get get it out you mm. know what i mean where it's mm. not so predetermined where it's a little bit more like expressive if you want mm. but with like tattooing in particular like obviously there's a lot of symbology this traditionally mm. in tattooing and so like generally like that symbology is not lost on like people because generally people that are collecting tattoos are familiar mm. at least to a certain extent you know 
to like the history of like Tywin and everything and, and also like a lot of the symbology isn't that like ambivalent it's quite obvious like what an anchor means and, <laughs> you know what a sunrise can mean and like mm. a butterfly obviously new beginnings and so on and so forth if you even if you're looking at like Japanese like you don't need to be au okay fait with Japanese culture to work mm. out, you know, certain things mean certain things. So Yeah, of course. And I think that must be really interesting for you, for yourself as an artist, having like that perspective in a discipline that, you know, you work full full time in being mm. in tattooing, but then also having your contemporary art and your, your other side. It's almost like this other side as an artist. Yeah, in a yeah, way. definitely. Like, well, like I kind of like think of them like as like almost like belonging to tribes really. Oh yeah. And yeah. you can kind of just dip in and out of the tribes mm -hmm. and borrow a little bit from one and then maybe use it to the other. I mean, even like tattooing, like the main reason I got into tattooing and graffiti was because it was just a natural progression from drawing. That's my yeah, of that's my love, drawing. Yeah. And then like from that, like it's just tattooing and graffiti was just another medium. Like it's like, mm -hmm. okay, right, I've got this creative voice if you wanna say that. Yeah. Like which is quite very linear and Baroque, so that lends itself well mm -hmm. to tattoos, which is a linear like art form if you mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. or at least the way I do it. Mm. Um, and then with graffiti, obviously you've got like your outer outer lines, and your like you know it's again it's like really quite line heavy. So I think those like artistic disciplines really like lend themselves well to my creative voice. Yeah, totally. And, and I think like technically as well, like having that crossover must be quite quite freeing. Yeah, it's ex like that's the thing. It's exciting. But again, like when you're like <clears throat> when you're a professional artist, you're like nearly always working to a brief. Mm. like not always but for the most part <laughs> and you know you're like working towards something that like you know your client's going to be happy with as well so mm. sometimes like it's not so freeing but like going back to what you said with the graffiti where I can just do something spontaneous then that's freeing so like yeah. you know I never really feel stifled not that like you know my tie works like, ever, like <laughs> no of course stifled but at the same time you know you're gonna get some people that want to go in a, a, a direction that maybe you're not familiar with or you think technically wouldn't quite suit them but yeah. mm, mm. I was gonna um, I was gonna actually ask how the, the, the tattoo like going into tattooing started because obviously in our you know conversation before this we were talking about um like facticity and mm. the idea of <clears throat> um you know everything that we go through as humans it sort of develop us as an artist so there must be a, a like for yourself like a crossover where you went from illustrating and then sort of moving into tattooing obviously being in a similar realm anyways. yeah 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 well it's a funny one because like when like growing a lot of people that get into tattoos like generally like are into it because of bands and things like that or things yeah. they see in like you know the like a mainstream medium or something but mm. for me like I, and or and or they're like family members are heavily tattooed but yeah. of all my family members in my formative years there was just one uncle that had like a really like <laughs> old school you know like the where it'd gone where the ink's gone yeah blue, so like, like that whole like <laughs> old boy like tattoo, which yeah. i love and i think that's part of like like so like that whole like traditional like americana mm. traditional like mm. you know like sailor like style like so it was like really like inspired me early on, I guess, in my subconscious going yeah, back to fantasy, yeah, yeah. like I would have seen this. And even the fact that maybe I wasn't surrounded by a lot of tattoos, that probably would have stuck out more. Mm. That that one, like, you know, old boy, like sailor style tattoo. And I was like, course, oh, okay. And then like probably that fed into my taste. Yeah. And yeah. the way I tattoo generally, like typically is neo-traditional, which mm. is like, so it's like your traditional Americana imagery, like your eagles, your mm. sailors, mm. your like <laughs> pinup girls, gypsy girls, and so on, and boats, like ships. Yeah. But like they're they're neo traditional because they're done in a more like ornate way. Like because obviously with traditional mm. tattooing, it was like more primitive because, like for example, they didn't have like the right inks and pigments. Like so, red way back when was made out of crushed red brick. You know, like the red brick houses. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's how you got your red, and it was crushed down and then <laughs> put into a paste and then had it with water and then yeah, that was it. And black oh, as well. Like way back when would have been like out of. Um, the hills of the boots, you know, the your, yeah, yeah, the rubber yeah. hills. Yeah. You would have melted them down and you think that's how you get your black. Like that's way crazy. back when. And so because like it was quite a primitive, like because it was primitive tools, the artwork 
was kind primitive, of yeah in a way, primitive yeah. in a way mm. and so like that was traditional and then neo-traditional obviously we've got the inks and the needles that we've got now and so you can afford to put more like um detail and more mm. like elaborate designs but still off the same mm. theme so that's what I, I dig on like i mean i like most facets of tarawing but yeah because it's so kind like, of my thing really it's so multi like you know genre bending mm. i suppose tattooing because like it's well personally i don't have any as, mm. as we've mentioned it's not saying that i wouldn't know yeah, so yeah. you know maybe yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. um yeah, yeah. but yeah no i find it really interesting like it, whether it's just me as like a you know from a visual arts perspective being interested in you know the idea of like the build-up of the lines and the detail and mm. all those things and that's the thing i noticed with your work actually um as, as a tattooist also as a you know a contemporary artist etc like the detail that you go into pieces is mad like yeah. when i was looking at on your instagram this morning because i knew we were going to do this yeah. i was like fuck man how do you do that oh, <laughs> like, thanks dude yeah well i think like i said it like really like lends itself well to like i like detail like it, mm. it, it, it it appeals to me and line as well always has appealed to me even when i was younger like you know yeah. copying like disney characters and so on and so forth like yeah, yeah. just that way and like it's a funny thing as well because like <clears throat> so like say i was to do like a couple of lines on 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 paper mm. and then ask you to trace those lines mm. they'll always be a little bit off because of our body dimensions and yeah, because of yeah. like factory again like yeah. you know what i've experienced in like you know knowledge and know how and how many times i would and that like muscle memory i suppose so yeah. you and so forth and so you're all, like no two people are gonna ever draw the same yeah totally which is totally, interesting yeah. as well no that must be cool man because like there must be like a level of experimenting as well that goes into it like obviously like with a client or something they probably have an idea of what they mm. want but we were saying how like like our influences as artists it almost not on purpose even subjectively can be imposed on others and I think like obviously in the world of tattoos that must be really hard to like balance you as an artist and what you're interested in and your inspirations and then what a client might want it's like that mm. that gray area the know? real balance really like particularly in tattooing is because you've got a paying client who yeah. wants a tattoo in who wants a tattoo and the experience mm. and that's their side and yeah. then on your side you want to a deliver that experience yeah. and give them a tattoo they want mm. whilst also advising against anything that's like technically not right or whatever mm. like for example like if someone was to get like a gypsy girl for instance in profile yeah it would it suits better for the gypsy girl's face to be facing the same direction as you are mm. when you put it the other way it just looks off it looks yeah. okay but like so like little bits of know how that you know through like studying and learning mm. to be a Taoist and so on and so forth and mm. just even aesthetically as well what works well as well like I think it helps if you've got um, a good like design like mind you know what works well because yeah. like you got to think that you're not drawing on a flat piece of paper or it's not going on a gallery <laughs> wall you know what I mean you've got yeah. it's going to go on a got to make it with, sort of conform yeah, I suppose exactly. to like a, a shape and yeah 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 it must be really interesting like the technical aspect of tattoo I find it interesting mm. anyways like the technical like the idea of trying to get a piece that as you said that you might draw on a flat piece of tracing paper to then bend around a knee or yeah, something yeah, to sure. make it look as it's meant to be there in a way i think as well like it, what you're saying as well that one of the things that like still gets me now is that like you're like you're to all intents and purposes drilling underneath someone's skin like, <laughs> so i don't know if you know but like the original like tattoo machines were mm. engraving machines they weren't meant That's to mad. be for like tattoos like no, no. it was only when someone realized it like yeah <laughs> they could you, stab themselves yeah yeah, 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 yeah for sure and so when you really think about it, you're kind of engraving like your image, which is like really weird when you really think about mm. it. If you're used to like things being on paper and like flat. Yeah. And then you got to think you're going to get all those techniques and like little skills to get effects mm. out of a needle, like you're, you're drawing with a needle. Mm. Like, mm. like when I was in uni, like they made me like, well, they didn't make me, well, they kind of did. <laughs> they, um, they said, oh, like they said, why don't you like use a, a sewing machine to draw? Like, I don't oh, know if you've ever done that. Yeah, it's really no, cool. that's really interesting. It's like, and I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not going in the sewing room. Like, 
looking away I look and everything. I'm not going like we were like and they were like no 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 like trust me you'll dig it and everything and like sure enough like it was really good like I ended up doing like the suspension bridge I'll send it to you actually yeah no I'd love to see it's that. really cool like really really cool like so mm. it's basically like more or less embroidery really uh, yeah no, but that's... like just like it just really like stuck with me I really like dug on it like I, like going back to what we were saying before about like oh it's just a different like medium like because I've already got like mm. that artistic voice that I've mm. got and it's like okay so i want to do this how can i do what i do using this and so yeah definitely and do you, did you find like for me studying brought up all of these different like techniques that i could learn or like different mm. rabbit holes and avenues to go down I think, yeah 100 like, like i just like the fact that like in studying like you're encouraged to experiment the only mm. thing i didn't like was the fact that there's so many things you could do but you have no time to do them <laughs> yeah, because the you know in alive. your head you're like thinking oh no i can't get like something done like and it's gotta be like judged yeah yeah you know, oh, marked God. and you're <laughs> yeah. like oh, and you're like and they're like no 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 you should experiment you're like no 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 i mean <laughs> i want to but like can you give me another three years of like yeah. not having to get a job that yeah. would be great just keep giving me money for sure and i'll yeah, turn yeah, up yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. honestly yeah, that sounds sure. like the bliss lifestyle i'm not right, gonna right. lie eh? <laughs> well maybe there what is those things you can do isn't there where you can go like they pay you well i forget what a name is oh like a you know, residency you, yeah, 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 yeah 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 where you and you quite often see them in the artist magazines don't you where totally. they're, they're usually like somewhere cool like cornwall or devon yeah and you, like got this like cottage overlooking a cliff and they're like oh yeah we'll pay you to stay here to like yeah. further your like studies like well not even your studies just experiment just come make yeah yeah, yeah. and you're like oh, yeah, yeah residency are, have you ever thought about doing a residency no i never really looked into it completely like sort mm. of touched on it before like the problem i had is because they don't really lend themselves very well to like the art i make mm. um it's nearly always like we said like experimental stuff yeah, or yeah, or yeah. quite often like it's like something that's like to do with like environment and everything and mm. even though like i've got a passing interest in the environment like my like art isn't exactly like no. piece. no it's sort of in its a uh, different avenue in a yeah way. yeah but I suppose so it I'm... doesn't really lend itself well but like the whole like I, like, I actually like printmaking actually like I, I, cool. I like printmaking like so mm. I, I mean I could potentially do something like that but then going back to what we were saying before when you got a nine to five and yeah it becomes a bit more difficult I suppose 100%. yeah definitely but uh, I think that's the hard thing isn't it it's like with the residency I've never done one but mm. I like the idea of them you sound yeah cool, right? yeah they they for, photography residencies seem pretty awesome as well because mm. they, they're sort of they're allowing you to go to this whole new potentially country you know to go explore and make images mm. and make a project or whatever it is um i wanted to do one in sweden this year yeah, nice um because part of treasure island my previous project was uh, i found out the original like iron mine for the port talbot steelworks so i wanted to continue the project on by going and photographing the original iron mine mm -hmm. um and i got permission to go and photograph it and then fucking COVID-19 came mm. out of nowhere I appreciate that bloody bat mm -hmm. um but yeah the, the idea of a residency has always been something I've like definitely toyed with yeah but it seems like a really not difficult thing to like find out and do but it seems like a really like because I'm not a big fan of like competitions in mm. art I don't like them I don't enter photography competitions personally yeah. um, why how come I just feel like art is a free form and it's so subjective. This is my one thing about studying, like in the art world, uh, in photography, contemporary art, because it's such a subjective matter. How can you mark something in an objective manner? You know, I like this artist, mm. this person's work, but the other judge might dislike it. It's completely mm. subjective in some ways. And I think that's the thing that I've always struggled with with regards to competitions in photography, is it becomes such a, a subjective thing. Obviously there's the technical aspect yeah. of, especially photography, technic the technique or the technical uh, approach to an mm. image is can be judged because you can judge whether it's overexposed, underexposed, of course. Mm. But the subjective stuff, so like the documentary photography competitions, for example, which have a technical aspect, but they're judging you on the story you're telling, the depth that kind of annoys me because it's kind of to me 
I'm in control of that work in some context, not the story, but the way that the story can be told, which is a fucking minefield mm. all on its own. I don't, I don't like the idea of somebody else judging that in the context of like, that's good, that's bad. Cause to me, that's not constructive. Yeah. If somebody came to me and said, that can be approved, that could not, it becomes this weird thing. And I don't know how much you know about the photography world, but people wear these competition wins as a fucking badge of honor. Mm. And don't get me wrong, I can appreciate finding, you know, have, doing something and being, um, happy with doing it and you know delighted that you've won this competition fair enough yeah. to you i appreciate that and the time and energy that goes into it but it annoys me how people use those as like a, a chip they mm. use them as a oh look i won the the taylor prize yeah it's like fantastic well done and <laughs> like you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah and of course i'm sure one day i'll start entering competitions <laughs> or whatever and this is probably just a perspective as a, of a young artist mm. right now but yeah it does frustrate me a little like, bit do you feel that like those like like you know you said about like if you did win you'd be stoked and everything on it like, mm. do you, like is there like part of you that feels that like you 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 don't want to put yourself on the show because like you feel that like it might be unattainable like in a way yeah I, I think there's definitely an element of um i don't know if you find this with your work in uh, or what you probably do but i've had a, a conversation in the past about how as an artist your your artwork is a piece of you especially mm. in in for some artists for me uh, massively mm. it's a piece of me like the imagery i make so it's like putting yourself on on display on display yeah. and being judged for that piece of you which A, is quite anxiety inducing mm. in its own way, but also B, it puts you in a place of like constant reevaluation, which can be a good thing. Mm. But if you're, you know, dealing with mental health issues or whatever it might be, can actually be quite bad. Sometimes yeah. you need to be in a stable place and mm -hmm. being an artist isn't very stable anyways, especially right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, for me, I've always found it because I'm showing a piece of myself creates this paradox especially in in the competition side of things mm. but you could argue you know an exhibition or, or you know a public domain of yeah, showing your work the is the same yeah. the same context i don't uh, but i yeah. suppose like with like yeah yeah kind of similar but i suppose like where you where you're not so putting yourself on show is you're not like with like a, a an award you're like mm. gonna get validation by the end of it or not yeah. if you don't win it totally I suppose like with like a an exhibition like we said where it's not necessarily a commercial like mm. exhibition as in you're not trying to sell a pretty picture to you know, like <laughs> a housewife to go with her like you know drapes or whoever yeah. is looking to buy it or yeah. you know billy blogs who wants it for his like totally. in room or whatever. totally 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 but yeah yeah i think i think with exhibitions it's a different especially when you're putting on your own shows or you're invited to put on a mm. show because you, there's a, a level of expectation of the art that you're showing because people are coming to see your mm. art or whatever it is you're making. What kills me with like 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 my like sort of field, if you want, with regards to like awards and especially, but is like when so you know you were saying where like with your um, f photography, like there's definitely like technique and everything and mm. all the rest of mm. it. Like I can really like like get on board with that because i feel that i've learned a lot <clears throat> mm. of technique and so on and so forth to do what i do mm -hmm. and it really irks me that someone could like get like column inches and make it yeah by like screwing up three bits of paper yeah and like putting that mm. on display and they're the ones who gets like that bothers me yeah no loads. I think it shows as well because like your work is very technical in its approach like because you're doing everything by hand mm. so you have to technically be adapt with moving you know your fingers to yeah, make yeah, yeah. the shade uh, mm. etc so, so yeah i can i can understand that must get really frustrating but then sort of counter that i think contemporary art has to be evolving and pushing in different boundaries mm. as well so the you know using the screwed up piece of paper as an analogy mm. i think there's there's a place for it, but by putting it in its place, you're sort of disproportioning it to the rest of the, you know, the 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 genre mm. as, as a way. Because it goes back to like the idea of boxes. We were saying it's yeah. like 
yeah i can i get what i get what you mean though like i think like is a double-edged sword though you know when you look at like the other side of it as well and the good thing of it is everyone's got a place in art that's the mm. that's the good thing about it like, mm. like the frustrations like lie when you think oh like so here's another thing how many times like have i said oh when i tell like someone that and then i say oh yeah well anyone could do it and then you're like but i didn't do it yeah yeah yeah. and yeah. so but i don't want to do it because it's not me like that no. wouldn't be authentic to me that's not my type of art like no. do you know what i mean like that's yeah. not to take away from that art like no of course, my frustrations of lie because you just think oh they've just yeah do you know what i mean yeah it's i like, suppose i've got i think it depends as well like what like world you live in as well in mm. art world i mean mm. like obviously because i like like detail and linear stuff like yeah. minimalist stuff is really lost on me like mm. not the technical aspect of it i 100 percent get that mm. Mm. like one of my tutors when i was like studying was like there's more power in leaving stuff off the page like they were like yeah. do your figure and like do it in like the corner of the page and then have all that expanse yeah and i yeah, can't yeah. cope with that <laughs> I'm like no. <laughs> it look needs at, to be. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, yeah. look at me. Like, there's not many gaps. Like, I'm no, me. like, no. I'm funny with like that. I think, like, I worked out like a long time ago that that's kind of in my like background. That like, yeah, like I like everything. Like, if I see like something plain, it's plain. I'm like, mm. oh, what could go on that? Yeah, see, that's the like, thing is weird, how right? how subjective that mm. is. You see what I mean? Like the idea of the competition, for example. Mm. You know, if you yourself was a judge who was into you know having the page full of mm. whatever it might be mm. and then myself is like very into a minimalism. Red square i'm yeah. like mm. yeah 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 yeah. that's what i mean so like isn't the idea of a competition flawed from the beginning 100 percent. in a way it's just like it's going to be judged by someone who's looking at it from like what they're either looking at it from what they like and then that's unfair yeah or they're trying to be subjective and then that's unfair because they're not mm. being true to themselves so either way it's it's a double-edged sword again yeah go. definitely mm. and i think that's the thing with the art world is like the art world's very generalized mm. but um i was a friend of mine jenny we were saying about how it can be really easy to read too far into the art like the arts and like the idea of the contemporary art and all mm. of these things because naturally that's what we are we're we're creatures of interest in in the creative world because mm. we're interested in you know yourself is interested in um the technical and the detail and those mm. sort of things whereas myself is interest potentially more in the story and the the what's being told through the imagery or mm. etc but then we can sometimes go too far with it you know mm. what i mean yeah, like yeah. It's, well, it becomes contrived sometimes yeah and it? and it becomes this like the amount of times I've seen artists fucking argue over other artists mm. work. So like, what are you arguing about? Mm. If you're into it, you're into it. If you're not, yeah. you're not like, I'm sure I've argued over artwork, of course, but why? <laughs> like, uh, no, I know what you're saying, but at the same time, like, is that not passion then? And if you're not like, gonna like, you know, take on the baton, if you like, mm -hmm. for like someone you really dig, maybe you don't really dig them. Mm, but then yeah, like you said double-edged sword again like yeah. maybe you just think yeah but like why would i reason with someone who can't see reason like yeah. can they not see that this is amazing yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah totally i think these are the interesting yeah. things though as well isn't it it's like being able to look from the outside like uh, uh, that kind of idea it's very easy to just get i suppose get involved with um the emotions of that moment if you're in it as such mm. whereas being able to look from it from the outside which i think as a as artists we're very fucking good at you know mm. being able to look at things as a whole from the outside in a way creates this own paradox again in in the way that we're thinking about the world like for example you know uh, a political decision for example you know my parents might look at it from uh, the ramifications that it has on you know their life or their friends lives or whatever it is whereas i might look on it as uh, the ramifications of the moment as as, uh, as the country and mm -hmm. more from a wide perspective obviously that's subjective again but yeah. I think that as an as artists we're naturally questioning and broadening her, our horizons to look at you know different perspectives and different ways of thinking because that's kind of what we're somewhat trained maybe not trained but sort of <clears throat> do to develop as artists because we're naturally sort of seeing different perspectives as such 
Yeah, I think, well, like, I think what you're trying to, like, we're storytellers, right? Yeah. That's See, the thing. Going back to the yeah. storytelling thing. <laughs> but yeah, like, but not just a storyteller, but we're a storyteller through our own experiences. Totally. And that only comes from our backgrounds and what we've been through and, you know mm. what I mean? And that, like, generally is an outlet on, like, our creativity, obviously, generally speaking, because mm. some people don't make like that, do you know what I mean? Some no. people like draw pretty pictures of like realistic mice and that's cool and it goes back to what i was saying before like the frustration really in the whole like thing that we were talking about before is more so that like you know what's gone into what you do yeah yeah and and then like you seemingly see someone else this like just i hate that word just as well because it just cheapens everything you know whenever you put just in front of everything like you know Yeah, uh, yeah 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 but um yeah it's just like you think oh but like so here's like an example like say you had someone who like spends a year on a painting okay mm. to get it just so however he wants mm. and then that guy or girl just mm. has those like balls of paper yeah and then yeah. all of a sudden people see like put can portray not portray can like oh what's the word like portal like can make a portal for themselves in that yeah, and yeah, miss yeah like what the other guy but it mm. goes back to what I was saying before like off air where you're like um, uh, sometimes you can like fall in love with technique and stuff yeah and miss like what it, like any feeling in the piece what it represents yeah, yeah, as, a, exactly as an emotion that. in a way yeah, and yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. yeah it's quite um, it's interesting how like I find it really interesting when you go to like an exhibition or, or an art show whatever with another artist who is a completely different discipline Mm. to yourself because in that moment you're both having different thoughts of the same piece of art yeah and i think there's a shit ton of growth that you can find in those moments as an artist yeah i definitely agree and i think yeah there's there's a level of like um i think it goes back to what you were saying about like somebody putting hours or years or whatever into a painting and then the the screwed up newspaper Mm. um the argument is from a technical perspective is this person's put this amount of time Mm. so are we are we valuing somebody via like valuing somebody's art via the time that's put into it because then the question would be that means a lot of art is devalued in Mm. a way you know there's um I forgot the artist's name, but he he made a, an art piece out of a urinal. His name completely... Foucault, isn't it? I think Foucault? so. Yeah, I think so. Which is just a urinal. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like he hasn't really done anything to that piece. So is it devalued in its time, that the time that he's put into that work? Like physical time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like... But he um, he's a shock artist, the guy you're yeah. describing, and his whole thing is like like going back to a narrative from his piece Mm. and so like in going back to like the rolled up newspaper or uh, uh, compared to (laughs) i love how that's made an analogy of the podcast i love that yeah 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 (laughs) but but you know what i mean like it's a good thing that like because it's something is quite accessible like yeah anyone can roll up some paper well it's like um you don't know she the person she or he who done that might have been doing that for a year and like everyone has to be just so to like portray what she wants to say it's like the um i don't know if you saw it i think it was um it was some big art festival in italy i can't remember the name um but the banana on the wall i don't know if you saw that piece that was literally a banana taped to the wall and it was um I don't think the piece even had a meaning. The artist didn't really have a... Oh, no, it was to do with... Similar to where you're going with this. I I just remember now. Um, The idea that art is now become so frivolous in its approach that you Mm. can make anything out of art. So he basically just took a banana and taped it to a wall. Mm. This piece sold for a few million dollars or something crazy. But then another artist during this show came along and just pulled the banana off the wall and ate mm. it and that became his performance art That's piece. Right, yeah. It's really interesting like the way that like this conversation we're having now in the context of like the screwed up newspaper it's different perspectives in in the way that we're valuing the you know mm. the work as such. So to me the banana on the wall aesthetically doesn't mean dick. It's yeah. not aesthetically pleasing but the 
idea of the challenge that the artist is making, I find a lot of pleasure in that. Mm. Whereas somebody maybe like yourself or somebody who's more technical based might look at that and think, it's a fucking banana on a mm. wall. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, it's really interesting. I don't know. Goes back to that idea of going to an art show with two two people with different disciplines yeah, yeah, again, yeah. I suppose. And like you said, like you see like the banana and everything, but mm. other people might like see it as like a phallus mm. symbol mm. and then they put like I think it's like a lot of like that's the the problem and the good thing with symbology and art is you can it's open to interpretation, right? Like totally. you said, yeah. and like by that, like that um, that introduce that invites rather people to like put put themselves on it, like mm. you know, going back to fantasy and your yeah, yeah, your, yeah. Your, your 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 like your experience through life and stuff mm. that helps like govern how you feel or mm. how you see something. Mm, mm, it's yeah. weird like I like not to know two people see uh, there's a thing like ages ago about um they like filled this room full of I think iron filings or something like that and then okay. like in they invited like I'm pretty sure it's like a hundred people to like just sweep it up mm. and of the hundred people no two people sweep the same and that's that that's yeah. crazy that's crazy. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. Like, that must have to, to it do. It was like a set room, set up, and yeah, yeah, like yeah. same way. They just put them on and passively, and they recorded like they recorded people like. So it's almost like a scientific study in a way. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Mm. That's really interesting. Not actually, true. yeah, because then it goes back to what you were saying about like the facticity thing. Because mm. people have ways of knowing how they, you know, pushed a broom before. You mm. know. I hold it with my left hand on the bottom and right hand, on, mm. and I do it like that. You know, but even mean? if maybe you've seen it on film or whatever, and then mm. you're like, okay, so that, or your mum and dad showed you that way, and then that that becomes your way, yeah, because yeah. that's your like what you've learned. Totally, but like someone else might have seen it another way. Yeah, it's really another way. It is uh, you just made me think about it, something else that I remember hearing on my first day in uni and everything, and like it like flicked a switch. It's kind of like it's kind of like um attached to what we're talking about and kind of not mm. where we're talking about like philosophies and stuff like that earlier yeah. and um there's like so in eastern like in like eastern like thinking like they like chinese mostly japanese that way mm. they're like kind they have like an expression right about like um uh well actually i'll tell you the american expression first <laughs> it's more easy so in america they like um have uh expression that like you know is mostly towards like children basically about the squeaky wheel gets the oil mm. have you ever heard that expression yeah i think uh, i think and I know then what you know about. the other bit and then like yeah. in like uh far east they say um like the proudest now gets um hammered, hammered. Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 like when you think about things like that it's crazy and that's just like one like ideology or one mm. like saying and like a way of being like what yeah we're kind of and it's almost that. like a way of um conformity in, mm. in a sense like you know let's all stay together and do the same thing in a, in a certain context or mm. that can be it can be read like that anyways mm. like the way we're you know the way i just read it then was in that context yeah. no it's really interesting um but like this but like going back to the room with dire and violence and everything like I, I can't remember the actual thing but like i'm pretty sure every, they were all european mm. and yet like so like we're saying like you can marginalize the whole like people if you like <laughs> by that expression and yet like you can compartmentalize every, one in a hundred mm. to like not do this like the 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 pre-governed way of broom, like sweeping a room totally totally it's crazy yeah really interesting so I think that's what about an hour. So I think we're probably Same. good. Yeah, yeah. Man, I think we good. ended that off. Yeah. We <laughs> yeah, but it's just like, the play that I just came in my head. I was like, oh yeah, it's cool. No, she try and sure. find it. It's like it's weird. Yeah, no, no, definitely, mm. man. I think that's the thing. Is like, so this is your first sort of like a first attempt at a podcast. I think, isn't it? Yeah, I think mm. the thing I always find with podcasts. I, I don't know if you got it from this as well, but once you get the ball rolling to like the first like ten minutes or whatever once you get that thing going it's like fuck man you're yeah, going yeah, down yeah, some yeah, avenues you, go, you know yeah, what i mean yeah. it's like sometimes well, i think it's the same when you just go to the pub in it and after like the second pint totally you're just like ah, just, <laughs> yeah, let's chat about whatever you want and for then sure just yeah, for yeah, sure yeah, just this time saying. there's microphones well yeah. these probably shouldn't go in a pub it'll pick up some weird yeah, shit yeah, you know yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah no definitely like i mean like yeah i think as well going back to what we were saying before as well like it's creative it's like you pretty much just off on a tangent aren't you 
constantly yeah. <laughs> almost I, am, like, I never like stated like whatever we're saying you know I just I knew that like I said like just like a record it just jumps yeah into yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah 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 we're sort of just yeah. scrambling yeah, different yeah, yeah. ideas or such. like when you say something and then I'm like oh yeah I want to say that and then, mm-hmm. like, and then like the conversations moved on you're like and I can't say that now oh let's say about that and then I'm yeah. like yeah yeah like, you probably think <laughs> 100% the same. man and I love that I love it like mm. when you you start going off on those rabbit mm-hmm. holes, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So, sure. um, with regards to people watching or listening to this, where can they find your stuff? So social media, I'm guessing. Yeah, Instagram, really. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, I do have like a Facebook page, but I don't really use it for that, really. Yeah, for sure. I know, man. yeah, if you put me as like Ghost rather than Spectre, Spectre was just like the Facebook wouldn't let me use Ghost, but then it did, weirdly. I do have Charlie Ghost as a Facebook thing as well, but I don't know. Cool, man. They were weird, like, they couldn't, you can't have nicknames or something, like, so. But, okay, know. that's strange. So, like, they wouldn't let me have Ghost, but, like, I was like, well, what's close to Ghost? And I was like, ah, oh, Spectre. Spectre. Yeah, so I went that, so. <laughs> but, yeah, my actual, like, is Ghost, yeah. Perfect, man. Well, I'll, um. Same. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course, and to anyone that's watching or listening, it will either be in the link below or in the description. Make sure you go check out Charlie's work. Yeah, um, No, I appreciate you coming on, man, and having some, like, deep fucking conversation yeah, about art always man. it's always a good time for sure. 100% well as I said thank you for coming on thank you for watching guys and or listening take care see you guys soon